One other example of constraint forces, I'll do an example involving tension. So this is constraint example two. And I'll note my point with these constraint examples is not to actually calculate what the constraint is, but to sort of help you think, think through how, what the sort of signs of the constraints are going to be, how the constraints are going to behave. Um, so you remember that in um, the first uh, set of exercises from module one, you dealt with this case of a kid on a swing, right? So here's the kid riding on the swing. If only I were an artist. And they're sort of swinging back and forth here. And the question that you were asked on the on that in-class exercise was to sort of, or on the, that exercise was to think about what both the velocity and the acceleration was at these different points, right? So we, I think we thought about this point where the child is, has a velocity that's relatively small and forward, this point where the velocity is relatively big and forward, and finally at this point where there's no, um, no velocity at all, that sort of they've reached their maximum there. Okay? And we thought about accelerations in these cases as well. At this point, the, the child is not, has sort of reached a maximum velocity, so there's no parallel acceleration. All of the acceleration is normal. To the, to the motion. At this point, the kid is slowing down, but is also, the, also, the velocity is turning, so the acceleration will both have a component that is radial and a component that's tangential, so the acceleration will look something like this. And finally, at this maximum of position, at that point, there's no turning happening to the velocity. The velocity has just gone from pointing this way to changing sign, but not actually changing, um, not turning. And so at this point, the acceleration is going to be purely tangential. Okay. Now, if you think about now what the forces that are acting on this, this child, well, one force that's acting is the rope is pulling on them. And another force that's acting is that gravity is pulling down. Now, the, the force that the rope exerts, or the tension in the rope, has a couple of characteristics. One is that it can only be along the rope, right? So it's got to be in the radial direction. That is, you can pull on ropes, but you can't, they don't, they don't sustain any load um, on the side. They, don't, they, they won't um, withstand any tangential load. Um, and the other thing is that the size of it is whatever is necessary to keep the length of the string less than or equal to whatever the rest length of the string is, right? Which is to say that tension is something that actually would allow the kid to go up to, you know, you can imagine the rope sort of bending and allowing the kid to be up here, but the rope is not going to allow the kid to be down here, right? This is not an option, whereas this sort of is an option. And that says that the tension is basically allowed to pull up it's allowed to be in the negative r hat direction, but it can't actually be in the positive r hat direction. It can't, you can't, the rope can't push the kid down, right? So there are two things. It's whatever is necessary to keep L at that value, and it can only pull in. That is, it's got to be in the minus r hat direction. Can't push out, okay? Which is to say you can't push on a uh, string. So those are the things we can immediately say about it. If we think about what that tension is at different points, well, pretty clearly at this point you're going to have a lot of tension in that string because at this point you've got gravity that's pulling down, you have the tension that's pulling directly up, and the net acceleration at that point is up, which tells you that at that point the um, the tension has to both offset gravity and give you that additional acceleration up. Right? At this point, there'll be a whole lot less tension in the string. There'll still be, there'll still be some tension in the string because you actually need to go from having a gravitational force that's down plus some amount of tension to give you this acceleration. And finally, at this point, you'll again have a gravitational force that's down and a little bit more tension to give you this net acceleration. So you can see that as the person moves, 
the tension is going to be different, and it's going to always be radially inward, right? So it's radially inward here, it's radially inward here, and it's radially inward here. But the size of it actually depends on where you are. It'll be largest here, and it'll be smallest here.